Um, my second question, I think I asked at the workshop, but I'll ask again about the um, first right of your refusal to Māori. Well, and the, the council has no first right of refusal obligations with with Māori in its property dealings, unless unless it had been purchased, unless there was a section forty obligation, or the or the asset was obtained under section fifty of the Public Works Act from the Crown for a public work that was no longer being proceeded with. So there's some, there are some circumstances. And just um, while Catherine's looking up the statute, the size of the the size, or the, rather the value of this asset, doesn't trigger the significance policy. So we'll get we'll get an answer from Catherine on that. So if you're happy to wait, Councillor yep. Casey, and she'll come back to you in the course of the discussion. Member Um, Kia ora. Um, generally <coughs> supportive of the recommendations, and in particular the new <coughs> the new recommendation that's been placed. Um, and. Just to ensure to get some comfort around the application of the Te Aranga Māori design um, principles, of course, the area with, within which the um, Civic Administration Building is is in very close proximity to um, an important site of significance to mana whenua, Hora Chupa. Um, and so there isn't necessarily a vanilla approach taken to um, the assessment of 10 applications that may come in. There's going to need to be a dual mana whenua involvement overall to kind of come up with a design that's reflective really of the, of the heritage values that sit there and that sit there before the administrative building. So just some um, comfort that that will be kind of looked at by your team or are careful yeah, and, that's uh, the context to that. And, and Madam Chair, it would be really helpful to capture the essence of that to make sure that's in the expressions of interest requests so people know from the outset what they need to think about. So that would be good to do some more work on that. Uh, through the Chair, just to add to that, um, through the quarter plan we're actually going through a process with Manif of mapping all of those sites of significance within the quarter itself and mm. that, that will all be captured and overlaid and then presented back as part of the the, the, the proposal around the, the civic administration building. Okay. Councillor Lee. Right. Oh, sorry. Uh, could, 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 mm -hmm. could I ask Clive whether, Mr. Phil, whether um, he has been in communication with the School of Architecture at Auckland University and Victoria University, uh, members of the faculty of which seem to have some expertise and interest in this building in terms of its heritage historic values. If not, I can give you, they did um, present to the Heritage Advisory Panel and I can give you those contacts. Yeah, th that's good. I think the, um, so in terms of our project team, Noel Reardon, who's our heritage, the council's heritage manager, manager is, is, large, is aware of those contacts. So he's been doing all the work, he's been doing the work around the unitary plan, heritage classifications, yeah. and, and generally deals with that liaison. But I, I, I'll, Noel's probably aware of them, I'm sure. I'm sure he is, but I think you guys need to be as well. So anyway. He's part of the team. He's part Thank of the you. Team. Yeah. Um, Rita was just reminding me, Dr. Caitley and Dr. Skinner, who are part of that group that Councillor Lee might be talking about, have been engaged in, in this discussion. They were going to come and address the committee. They're going to wait till things have progressed a little bit further along the line. And they've said, I think, Rita, they've seen the recommendation. Yes. Uh, through the chair, <coughs> I can read and quote uh, Dr. Uh, Gately's uh, email. Um, she wanted to note for the record that they support recommendation A1, which has submitters to restore the heritage values of the building. Uh, for her, this means two things. One, allowing the building to remain legible, recognizable through the repair and reuse process. And two, remembering that the building is located within a civic center and in order to remain a civic center, it needs to retain council presence, i.e. at least part of the building should be reused by council. Um, okay, thank you for that. Um, Catherine, did you want to enlighten us? Yes, just to um, to um, to continue where we left off, um, Councillor. The proposed sale or activity in relation to the civic building does not itself 
trigger the significant engagement policy. The policy adopted um, at the end of last year creates a number of thresholds for whether something is significant. <laughs> One is transferring the ownership or control of our strategic assets. And as I said previously, the civic um, building itself is not listed as a strategic asset um, by council. The others are creating a new group of activity, stopping carrying out a group of activity, or increasing by a certain percentage or decreasing spending on a group of activity. Um, and so in terms of those thresholds, um, the statement that this doesn't necessarily trigger that significant engagement policy is correct. Okay, thank you. Can I just ask, um, was it an oversight that wasn't listed? I don't, I don't recall, I remember, I remember the list of strategic assets, but I don't recall any discussion about the civic building being on or off that list. <coughs> Um, I, can't, I can't help you with the, the background of the discussion that led to what was included in that list. So there's a threshold um, matters that uh, you consider as to whether something triggers that policy, and there's a general approach um, to whether something um, creates that degree of significance, um, which can include the impact on um, the number of people affected. So there's a list of criteria in terms of think matters that you might consider. Um, but not black and white that tip something <coughs> in or out. Okay. Councillor Darby? Uh, just before I speak to this, um, but uh, I'm just, um, and I thank Councillor Clove for his addition on the Roman 5. I'm just wondering if we get the words exactly right there, because um, the words should be restored, are restored um, rather than retained, because we actually have lost some of the heritage values there. Mm -hmm like mm. the beautiful mosaic tiles and they, you know, somebody coming along might say, well, I think there's a place to rediscover those mosaic tiles uh, on the north and south faces. Um, and it's as far as practicable. I think if the, the, I would be very comfortable if the words were, if the heritage values of the building are restored and pick up the other words, which are as above, as far as practicable which um, which is what Councillor Clough referred to. He did refer to Roman 1. Yep, that's fine. Yeah. I think that's useful. Did you wish to speak now? Yeah, look, I, um, members, we've... This is probably the... We've had a few gaps in discussions on this building and, and the, the context. It's the land around which it sits and in which it's framed. But we have discussed this in our committee and I, uh, our workshop of recent, and I thank the staff for examining this building as deeply as they have. And we've had a number of reports that have come through and they've been peer reviewed. This is the heritage reports, they've been peer reviewed. And they confirm that this building is a very important building in Auckland's cityscape, without doubt. Um, as a student, I remember coming in to my, my arrival in the city centre was, um, you know, living in Ponsonby, and around about that time, I remember a building very close to this building, the Salvation Army building, just almost disappearing without discussion, just going. Um, and now, of course, we are having deep discussions uh, before anything like that uh, could take place. And I would say we've moved past um, any discussion about the removal, demolition of this building. Uh, the evidence says that we must do a lot to retain this building. Um, I'm not anticipating watching any YouTube videos of uh, um, explosive deconstruction of this building. Uh, that will not be happening in our lifetimes. So here we embark on a new journey for this building. Um, we've all lived in it in some way as councillors. It's quite a unique building. Um, we know the history of uh, Tibor Donar as the architect back in the um, early 60s and construction in 66. It's got quite <coughs> a unique floor plate. It's narrow. You can see west to the Waitakeris. You can see over the square, over, um, over Albert Park, out to the Haraki Gulf. It's, it's not a crammed building. It's, it's got a beautiful openness about it. Lovely context, arises out of a hole. It's, it's very odd in the way that it arises out of that hole. It's unshouldered by other buildings, um, but it was not planned that way. It was actually planned to have 
development on, particularly on its eastern shoulder. And there were some quite controversial plans at that time, but I won't um, go over those details. I'm sure most members are, are up to date on that controversy back uh, in the 50s and early 60s. But um, one of the interesting things that fascinates me as I looked out the window, and like all of us, we listened to the, the wind whistle uh, through the aluminium extrusions. The aluminium extrusion was the beginning of the aluminium industry in Auckland. <coughs> that was that building that actually stimulated a whole lot of industrial development. Um, you know, the, the whole al aluminium extrusion industry is my understanding. So it's got, it's more than just the building, it's actually uh, a lot of what this building brought can be seen in other parts of Auckland. We just don't recognise that. But it was this building and the methodologies of construction that allowed a lot of other Auckland uh, buildings to, to come into existence. So um, this, this building, members, I <coughs> would have to say we have to do our very, very best to see it retained and to allow it to shine again. And uh, I think it's been interrupted by some, uh, some weak life over the years of um, not really having a, a, a permanent occupant. Um, I would like to see, and I'm sure many of us would like to see that real civic op occupation come back. Um, but I'm not averse to other commercial uh, uses of that building um, or residential uses of that building. I'm very open to that. Um, and we'll see that possibly uh, come out through the EOI. What we don't see in the UI is a lot of documentation that is going to go out, which is going to reinforce the need for a party that has got the skill set and the willingness to be innovative, to do the very best that this building is worthy of. And I've been with the Deputy Mayor, we've been talking to the staff in recent days about uh, what might sit in the documentation that goes out and, and our staff are assuring us that there's going to be a lot more than what you can see just in these resolutions. But some of the amendments uh, help reinforce the need for best practice urban design, best practice architecture, um, Māori design principles and sustainability, etc. But I do go back to emphasise the need for something reasonably radical here. Restoration of the heritage values, but just let's think of the precinct that it's in, the Aotea precinct. The precinct of creativity, <coughs> the precinct of expression. Um, I would say a lot of the buildings around this precinct are extremely weak. Um, if I look at the theatre complex on the northern boundary, uh, one of our weakest buildings in that area. The Aotea centre itself, I think once that's reskinned, is could be a very magnificent building, and that time will come. Uh, the town hall, beautiful anchor on the eastern side. Uh, the land in between is quite weak. And as you exit, as we've all exited the, the front door of the Civic Building when we were living in it, mm. uh, you, you, you sort of walked across this no man's land and then you finally got to the square. It was a, it's a very weak connection. And I, I, look at the, um, I, ref, I look at the transformational shift four in the Auckland plan and this is, these are the words that actually uh, I would like to see those that might come along um, and express an interest in bringing a whole new life to this place. I, these are the words I'd like to see them hang their hat on. And transformational shift reads, radically improve the quality of urban living, with some emphasis on the word radically. Uh, I think that needs to be drawn out. And then you go to the 2007 Aotea Court of Vision and words like civic heart, vibrant place to indulge the senses. Again, you're talking about not just the activities of the square and within the buildings, but you're talking about the architecture and the urban design also indulging the senses. That's how I read it. And the proposed 2015 update to that Court of Vision uses words like sustainable, and it repeats indulging the senses, expressing creativity. All of that needs to be drawn out through this process. So members, it's our opportunity to start realising some of the words that we've got in our planning documents, be it Auckland plan, uh, vision plans for the quarter. Uh, it's our opportunity to show Aucklanders that the council 
can deliver the outstanding. I'm, I'm hopeful that this, these, this expression of interest goes wider than just the Auckland or national development market, that we make sure it reaches into the international development community and draws out the very, very best. There will be a number of people that respond to us, and I'm sure the team will be going, yep, thanks very much uh, for your letter, but no, you don't make the cut. Um, we have to be extremely ambitious in our expectations here, um, particularly the design quality that we'll be calling for. So no demolition of Civic. Uh, I think that is a line we have now crossed. Uh, no YouTube videos. Let's start to realise a real beauty for this precinct. Mm.